Hello! Welcome to History on a Budget. I'm Victoria, and today we're making an 18th century Christmas gown. I was feeling festive, it's tis the season, so a gown was born. We'll be using the Larkin and Smith English gown pattern, and my fabric is from an Ikea duvet set. Uh, this one, should you care to pronounce it, on your own. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm starting to cut out my pattern. I'm using the Larkin and Smith English gown pattern. And as you can see, I'm trying to conserve as much fabric as possible because I'm a little bit worried about having enough in this um, comforter cover set. So this is actually the pillow sham. I went ahead and washed all the fabric. I ripped apart the pillow sham because it made a pretty big width of fabric. And I'm trying to squeeze as many pieces out of it as I can while still keeping to the grain lines since that will be important because this has stripes. Um, I already made my lining out of just some old bed sheet material because bed sheets are the best. They're cheap and easy to find. And I'm not quite following the Larkin and Smith instructions. I'm doing this the same way as I did my last bodice, which was my tester for this. You can check that out in my last video. So I've put the whole lining together, and then I'm going to kind of assemble the top part, so the fashion fabric, um, on top. So I have a lot of the pieces cut out now, but I need to cut out um, really the biggest pieces. I have the stomacher and the whole back piece which will go all the way to the floor for the gown because the back piece and the like skirt bit are connected in that piece and this is this is all the fabric I have left is the duvet cover I think to make it easier to work with I'm going to have to seam rip the whole thing apart because right now it's sewed in you know a rectangle so you can put it on your duvet, but it's going to take forever, but I think it'd be best if I made it into separate pieces, so I guess I'll see you when I'm done seam ripping. I've skipped ahead a bit, so all of the pieces are cut out now, and the back piece, which is essentially just a really big rectangle, I went ahead and made the pleats that make it the back of the gown, and sewed them onto the lining, and then trimmed away the excess fabric on the top piece. So it's starting to look like something. You've got the skirt, got the lining. So I'm kind of going rogue from the directions at this point, as I tend to do. I'm trying to decide if I want to attach the bodice side pieces yet, or the skirt bits yet, which I'm totally ignoring their measurements and crap for the skirt. I'm basically just taking whatever is left of the fabric I have and putting it on either side and hoping for the best, I guess. The side panels are now on, as are the skirt side panels. So now I just have a whole bunch of fabric here in the back. So what I did is I sewed just the side seam of the back panel and the front one together, separate from the lining. So that's not actually attached to the lining yet. Then on my dress form here, since I have it pretty well padded to my corseted measurements, I've laid it all out so it's flat, and to attach the pieces together, I'm going to carefully fold over the excess of the lining so that it creates a nice clean edge, and pin that all the way down the front here. 
um, and then sew it so that my pieces are attached. I actually did the top differently than I just told you. So I um, folded both edges in, or not in, yeah, in. I folded both of them under themselves and then top stitched over it because it seemed to make less bulk. So it's kind of like lapping in the historical sense, except that it's with a machine and different. I don't know if that was a helpful explanation, but it's what I got. So yeah, you can see I took this outside edge and I folded it inwards and I took this outside edge and I folded it under itself inwards so that there's no raw edges. And this will be covered by the rollings when it's done. Now I'm going to move on to pleating the skirt. So I need to cut the fashion fabric up to this pleat so that I can actually pleat the rest of this um, and not have a gap in between the first pleat and the back pleats. So time to start pleating. I finished pleating. Look at all these little tiny pleats. I can't believe I managed to get all the fabric in on the first try. I thought it would take me a bunch of tries or that I'd have to cut some fabric out because I really didn't measure how much fabric. I just kind of made some big pieces, but I'm happy with it. From the front, it looks very lovely. So, as per usual, I've gone rogue from the pattern instructions, so now I'm kind of just making things up as I go. I think to attach the pleats, what I'm going to do is I've been really careful to keep the lining out. And I'm going to go ahead and fold under the raw edge on the front, which I can't do one-handed apparently. And I think sew it on the top there, that way, so that it catches all of my pleats and finishes this outside edge. But I want to not catch my lining. And then I'll finish that afterwards. That seems impossible. How am I going to not catch the lining? I'm going to have to be really careful. And of course I've put all my pins on this side, when I need to see on this side, so... We'll see how this goes. This might be an awful idea, but... Well, don't know until you try it. The skirt is on, the pleats are all in place, and they look so pretty from the outside. My bobbin was a nightmare. <laughs> They're not as pretty on the inside, but you know, normally I would maybe take this out and redo it because, like, look at that. It's an absolute disaster. But it's actually attached pretty securely. I've tugged on it to check, and it was such a pain under the machine because I've got like pleats and I was sewing so close to the edge and I didn't catch the lining, which I had to make, keep checking it wasn't under there. So I'd ha redoing it would be a whole lot of work. So I think I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna try and figure out what's happening with my machine. I already changed the bobbin and that didn't fix it. So I think my needle is probably just dull because I think I've had the same needle on there for like the last million years. But the skirt is on, and no one's going to see the inside. So we're going to call it good enough and keep moving. To finish the inside lining of my gown here, I'm going to go ahead and hand sew it. So I'll, I'll fold this under and whip stitch it down. Hopefully it'll cover some of the ugly inside bits. Uh, 
But even if it doesn't, it'll at least finish this inside edge and still attach to the skirt to give it just a little more strength so it's not all being pulled on at one seam place. I finished hand sewing down uh, the lining. I just did a little whip stitch on the inside so that you can't see any of the stitching on the outside um, for the lining piece. I then real quick went around with my machine uh, and hemmed the edges of the skirt panel and I didn't mind that you can see a little bit of stitching there. Um, that's not a big deal to me. So the bottom half of the garment is completely done. Really all that's left is putting on some real sleeves and not just um, lining sleeves because we have the lining here. So putting the sleeves on, uh, putting the robings on to finish the shoulder and front, and putting on the little finishing back piece. So we're almost there. Woo! Oh, and making the stomacher. I do need that. We've officially started playing thread chicken. No! She's really starting to come together. Starting to look like a dress. So as you can see, we have the skirt attached and finished. Um, I chose not to put pocket slits in it because I usually don't with my overskirts because I don't really mind just like reaching under them to get to a pocket. That's just a personal preference mostly because I'm lazy. Uh, so you can see the front's finished. I've got the sleeves on. So the way I'm doing, well almost, the way I'm doing these sleeves is I've sewn them in just under the armpit. So I've gone all the way around from the back to the front. Um, and I've left the top open here since I didn't have fabric to sew to because actually this isn't attached to the lining at all at the moment in the sleeve. The lining sleeve is sewn to the lining bodice pieces and the fashion fabric sleeve is sewn to the fashion fabric bodice pieces. You can actually see here's the seam allowance of the lining sleeve. So that just tucks into the fashion fabric sleeve like so. So this is being built around it. What I'll now do is pleat the top of the fashion fabric sleeve to match the measurement of the arm and I'm just going to carefully hand sew kind of baste this to the seam allowance of the lining sleeve just to keep it down and attached and pleated. All of the raw edges will be finished by the robings, which will go from the back shoulder area here all the way down the front to there. Oh, an update on playing Thread Chicken. We're still winning. It's still there. Right now the gown is 100% wearable, it technically could be done. I've got the robings on, I've got a stomacher, all the edges are finished, um, the back is done. I accidentally put this piece on crooked because I wasn't paying attention, but it still serves as its purpose and I can always fix it later if it bothers me. So. She could be done right now, but since this is a dress for Christmas, I think we need some ruffles. So I'm going to add a little bit of decoration and come back in a minute. She is sufficiently decorated, feeling Christmassy. I only did one ruffle on each of the sleeves. I cut enough for two, but I kind of liked it with just one. And then I put some lace. This is just some lace out of my stash. I think I got it at a garage sale. I just tacked it on there real quick to give it a little bit of fun and then finish it off with a nice Christmassy red bow in the center. So now it's time to go put this on and get Christmassy.
so that's it. The dress is done. Christmas is coming. I'm feeling festive. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I think it looks beautiful. I think it looks festive. I feel ready for Christmas. Um, some things to improve for the future. The little back piece. I put it on crooked. I can rip it off and straighten it sometime when I want to. We'll see if it happens or not. And I might also one day add ties to the inside of the overskirt so that I have the option of making it a pleats, which is basically, in a modern sense, similar to how you bustle wedding gowns today. Um, the overskirt's just a little bit long, so it drags in the snow, which is very great for like dramatic effect, but practically not the best thing. So I might change it one day. Other than that, I'm really happy with it. It fits well, it looks nice, and I feel ready for Christmas. I hope you have a great holiday season. I hope you get to wear your favorite Christmas gown, even if it's just in your own home. And hopefully someday in the future, we'll be able to gather again and all show each other our beautiful creations. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all of that down below. I'm making new projects all the time because we have big dreams here and small budgets, but we're making it happen. See you next time. This one. This is the one. All is well. Peace on earth. Kind of. Most Everything's holly jolly or whatever. Where am I going with this? The snowblower. The snowblower. The snowblower. Oh my gosh, she finally finished snowblowing. Well, we'll do this again. <laughs> oh wait, I can just make it as a Just hit the wall. Just hit it. Huh.